Can I ask you, um, first and foremost, you're from like the Bay Area, right? Yeah, from Oakland. Nice. I I looked up a couple things about you because I was super interested. Oh my goodness! You wanted to dance. Be a dancer at Juilliard. I did. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it was it was cool. I think that uh, my path switching because I got a knee injury was ultimately probably God because yeah. I definitely like growing up seeing like how I've turned out to be, how my personality is. I don't yeah. think that I'm too Juilliard compatible. I think you are. <laughs> I think you're Julia you compatible. I well, think thank you. Maybe, maybe one day I'll I'll go to school and I'll be a ballerina like I wanted to be. But for now, so you did. So it was ballet that you loved. Yeah. No, I've always loved all kinds of dance, but I was I was super heavy into ballet uh, when I was younger. So. In my In my all right. So, um, Haley, I don't know if you know this. Haley is an extraordinary ballet dancer. She hasn't danced in years i always tell her to go take classes in la baby real quick what is um do you have a favorite ballerina that she would know do you know missy copeland of course of course so Haley, Haley did a lot of ballet she's really really good um what else babe um so you're 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 really you're you're glad that you didn't end up like dancing you like what you do right obviously yeah i i didn't actually start really singing until i couldn't dance because i was i've always been kind of like one i can only focus on one thing majorly at a time kind of for the most yeah. part yeah yeah um so yeah i don't think i would have focused heavily enough on music if i was still dancing because i would have been so you know in the dance world so yeah yeah are you would you say you're like a super creative person yeah, I am. I actually just uh, spent the last week flipping my garage from a storage space into a um, video editing studio, photo editing studio, and like a recording studio. So that's awesome. That's in my garage right now. Can I? Can I see it? Is it done? You want? I mean, it looks kind of. That's okay. <laughs> um, you, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Well, it's just a far walk, also. But you know, maybe I'll, I'll take it. I'll take you on tour, maybe by the end of this conversation, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. There's no no need. But um, I was, I was just some, some desks But um, I, I I did write some other things down that I'm interested in. Um, it's on this paper here. Give you some really cool things. Um, very good. What are you doing? You're playing with a big part. Why can't I? Okay, so. Oh, yeah, your tattoos. Yeah. When did you start getting tattoos? Um, I was 16 years old. I got my first tattoos at the park. At the park? At the park. My friend knew how to okay. do stick and poke tattoos. So she was like, hey, like, like, let me tell you. And I was like, sure, let's try it. And I just thought of random symbols and she put them on my knuckles. So. That's awesome. And you kind of fell in love with it, obviously. <laughs> she has a lot to say, obviously. Yeah, she's adorable. She's absolutely so I wish I could squeeze her. <laughs> she's got the best hair. Isn't it the best? Just it's so curly. Funny. And how does she smell? What? Um, well, right now, I'm pretty sure there's a poop. Right. Like, I'm but almost... I'm just talking about the baby smell, though. <laughs> oh, the baby smells good. It's, like, actually, it's, um, it's super interesting. So, as, like, you know, like, women are, or birthing people, uh, we have a bunch of technology. Um, I, th I consider it technology, like, um... There's a hormone that actually comes from babies' heads when they're born that, you know, can make women almost feel, like, high. Yeah. Um, that That's kind of thing. Yeah, like, it, like, it's it's pretty crazy. And there's, like, this this baby, um, 
detergent that I had to use for her because, you know, regular detergents will irritate her skin as, as a newborn. Mm-hmm. But I literally, I, I use it on my clothes now because of it smells like baby. And it, yeah. I will sit there in the laundry room and just like oh. bury my face in the clothes. It's I really love bad. that. The smell of babies are, it's just such, it's the best smell ever. It's my favorite thing. The best smell. Um, all right. So songwriting, have you been writing songs lately? I have. I finished my album, so yeah. I'm not working on that, but I have while being in the house with nothing to do you, know, you can you can get creative in those ways so yeah writing here and there but mostly you write most of your music or all yeah, of your I write music most, i write most of my music um a good 90 percent, and then people that i feel comfortable with my, my friends my family members yeah we've all been writing together and stuff so that's awesome uh pop life what does that mean to you I was a kid. Well, was, what does that mean? What is that? What is it for people who don't know what pop life is? What is that? I was in a kid band from when I was like 13 years old to when I was about 16 and a half, 17 ish. Mm-hmm. And we were a cover band. So we played a bunch of like old R&B, like funk, soul music. Um, yeah. So don't go looking it up because I would like is, to not revisit that part. Is it embar- is it embarrassing? Do you do you regret doing it or do you feel like it got you to where you are today and gave you some, you know? Oh yeah, I don't regret it at all. I don't I'm super grateful for it. It taught me everything. It made me a performer before I ever even wrote a song. Um I didn't write my first song until I was already 18 years old, but I had been performing music and singing live for like mm-hmm. 4 or 5 years before then, so it definitely it definitely gave me the tools to not only just like be an artist but be a business person like how i show up to places have a work mm-hmm. ethic like how to communicate in the industry like you know how to how to deal with things like that and i was little so it's it was epic to be able to apply that then that's really cool i was gonna ask so um you are obviously an incredible businesswoman an incredible artist um i mean everybody sees that and everybody knows that people love you is this um, your microphone but- no, no, no. I was just, I don't know my, why my hand was there. I just was like, yeah, that's my fake microphone. No, I just, I don't know. I guess, uh, I don't know. It must have been a nervous tick. I don't know. But um, I was just going to say that um, you are obviously um, super successful. What was it that made you want to, is your family successful? Are they, um, because you are obviously multi-talented in a lot of different areas and you have like a, a great work ethic. What, who taught you that? Oh, why does my face look like this? Um, what taught me that? I, 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 I don't ever want to say I'm the first person to have like success in my family because I think mm. that my family, um, you know, found happiness in different ways, and I think that that is success to me. But I sure. am the first person to to kind of be this this successful. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't, really, I didn't have either of my parents. I grew up with my aunt. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that she just taught me that not only if I have a passion to go after it, but, like, I have to go out, go, have to go about it in a smart way, in a way yeah. that proves that, like, I care about myself and care about my future family um, yeah. and things like that. But I think that was part of the question. Yeah, no, that was that was really well spoken and well articulate. Um, you said your aunt was the one that kind of gave, gave you a little bit of drive and passion to yeah. – Basically, she was encouraging to you, telling you that you were awesome and telling you to kind of step out and do what you loved. Am I kind of on the money with that? Yeah, absolutely. She um, she didn't have to raise me. She adopted me. I was adopted back into my own family. Um, So if she didn't, I wouldn't have been in my family. So she just, I think, is responsible for everything, whether it be, you know, the music or dance. She put me in dance classes. She, you know, busted herself to to make sure she could have get me into dance classes and then get me into art school and things like that so she did she didn't have to do any of that because I wasn't her child um so I'm just super grateful that I had someone like that it's really awesome what's her what's her name her name's Tanya she's the Tanya so I'm gonna say thank you Tanya from me from my wife from everybody (laughs) in the world who now gets to experience 
this amazing artist um, named Keelani. We are so grateful for you. Thank you so much for coming on and thank you for giving us your time. We really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Say bye-bye. Bye, sweetheart. Take care. And she's eating hand right. sanitizer. Have a <laughs> hey, let's go. <laughs> All right. Take Bye. Care. Bye.